Hello gentlemen, welcome to section 1.5 on density, measuring mass and volume. Now density is defined as the comparison of how much matter there is in a certain amount of space. We know that all matter has mass. Mass can be defined as the amount of matter an object contains. They're circular definitions. One involves the other and the other involves the one. We know that all mass contains or has a certain volume. Volume is the amount of space an object occupies. All objects will occupy some space that we'll encounter. Another special point is that all substances have their own unique densities. For example, water has a different density than ethanol. Sugar has a different density than salt. Lead has a different density than iron. They all have their own unique densities. Now, in our investigation, we observed the relationship between different measurements of the volume of water my measurements here, 10, 20, and 30 milliliters, a little different than yours. In the lab, you had 10, 30, and 50 milliliters. I'm using smaller scale here. And the associated mass of that volume of water. So here, is my, here are my data points. And in your investigation in the laboratory, you plotted those data points and made an XY graph. So on my Y axis, I have mass versus volume on my X axis. If I plot these points, 10 milliliters, and 9.85 grams, I have my first data point there, and I carry on from my data here, plotted here. The trend that I see is that these data points are in a line. If I draw a best fit line, it is linear in nature. This tells me that the slope here is constant. It is not a changing slope, it is a very constant slope, and we can verify that by using the fact that the slope equals the slope of a straight line equals the rise over the run. So in this case, the rise is our mass value. That's the y-axis over the run, which is represented by our volume, which is in the x. I mean the x-axis. This is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. So if we divide that rise divided by run, we get ten. Sorry, 9.85 grams divided by 10 milliliters. 19.65 grams divided by 20 milliliters. Or 29.77 grams divided by 30 milliliters. All of those will give me an approximate value of almost 1. Like 0 0.98 something grams per milliliter. So that would happen that you'll get the same value for all of those data points. Thus, they would all have the same or very similar values for the slope. So the slope is equal to the mass over the volume. The slope is equal to the density. This is important because we have different data points here. We have a volume of 10 milliliters, a volume of 20 milliliters, a volume of 30 milliliters, and different masses for those, for those volumes. But we still get a similar or the same slope here, similar values for the rise over the run. This tells us that any amount of water, 10, 20, 30 milliliters, will have the same density. Water has the same density no matter the amount. Now, the relationship between mass and volume can be given to us in equation form. In class, we learn that density equals love, or Density is mass divided by volume. Mass is measured in units of grams, and volume is measured in units of milliliters. This is particularly the case when we have a liquid. When we're talking about a solid, and the density of a solid, the mass of that solid is measured in grams, and the volume is measured in cubic centimeters, centimeters cubed. Now, this is really important. Units must always be included in your calculations. If they're not included, then your calculations are not completely correct you will be docked. Now, an example of a density problem. An unknown liquid with a mass of 25 grams occupies a volume of 5 milliliters. What is the density of this liquid? Well, the first thing we do is decide what equation we're going to use. Lo and behold, density equals mass over volume. That's the equation we'll use. Now we state our variables. We know that mass is equal to 25 grams. We know that volume is equal to 5 liters, 5 milliliters, excuse me. And we can substitute these values in for mass and volume. So density equals 25 grams divided by 5 milliliters. 25 divided by 5 gives me 5. 
but I carry my units with me, so it's five grams per milliliter. If you do not have your units in all of these steps, it is not correct. Now, every problem isn't going to ask you to solve for density. It might say, well, given this density and this mass, what's the volume of the substance? Or given this density and the volume, what is the mass of the substance? So you have to know how to manipulate this equation algebraically to solve and isol isolate and solve for a different variable. If you have a hard time with that um, in algebra class, you can use a little trick here. This is a little density triangle. It's M over VD. You can think of it as men of valor and distinction. I don't know. Whatever you choose to think of it as, you can you know, make up your own mnemonic device here. But when you're solving for density, as we are here, cover up density. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. When you're solving for volume, cover up the V here. Volume is equal to mass divided by density. When you're solving for mass, cover up the variable for mass. Mass is equal to volume times density. That's an easy way to use this triangle to manipulate your equation and solve for a given variable. Now, what happens when the object we're trying to measure has a very weird shape? We call that an irregular shaped object. So the density of an irregular shaped object is found through a technique called water displacement. For example, if I have water, like in this beaker here, and I put a, an irregular shaped object. Irregular means it's not a cube, it's not a sphere or a, in a, a pyramid or a cylinder, something that has a given volume equation. There's no volume equation to calculate the volume of this car here. So, a technique that I could use is water displacement. I put this car in, and when I do so, the water level of this beaker rose. Let's talk about what that rise in volume means. Now, so this represents my initial volume of water that I had in my beaker. This is a graduated cylinder, as we know, but well, we can still use this example. So here's my initial volume, this little squiggly line representing the water. Then I'm going to input my irregular shaped object. Irregular shaped means it has jags, you know, jagged edges and grooves and things that you just can't quite measure with a ruler. I put this in, and when I do that, the water level rises. We've all seen this happen before, swimming pools, bathtubs, you know, washing dishes, whatever it is. The water level is going to rise. This is my final volume. It rises to a new volume of water. Why does it do that? Because this solid object literally displaced that water. Well, the water used to be, now the object's there, so the water can't go sideways. It has to only go, has only, it can go nowhere but up. So it goes up. So this distance, or this volume increase, from my initial volume to my final volume, that space in between, this represents the volume of my irregular shaped object, my solid object. So again, the difference between the initial and final volume is equal to the volume of the object. So we try to find the volume of that car. You would find it through water displacement, submerging it in water, watching the difference in volume, and that would be the volume of your object, in this case, the car. Now let's talk about when we don't have a solid. We just have differing liquids that are mixing together. So liquid layers. If you pour together liquids that do not mix and have different densities, they will form liquid layers. The liquid with the highest density will be at the bottom. The liquid with the lowest density will be at the top. This also applies with solids and liquids. Here's an example of liquid layers. These are one, two, three, four, five different liquids. They're all different substances, thus they all have their own unique densities. Thus, they separate by their densities when they don't mix together. And these do not mix, obviously. So gentlemen, please take notes and have a great day.